Many Pennsylvanians rely on private water wells for their water supplies. With over a million wells in Pennsylvania, we are second only to Michigan in terms of the number of water supply, private water supply wells. Before we talk about water wells, let's think about where the water in our wells comes from. Anywhere in Pennsylvania beneath our feet is rock. That's what we drill through in most wells to find water. But how does groundwater flow through rock and into our wells? A common misconception is that wells tap into subterranean streams. But such streams are extremely rare and very small, and wells never get their water from such streams. In some places in Pennsylvania, mostly in northwestern Pennsylvania, water flows through unconsolidated sediment, through small openings between grains of sand and gravel. However, the vast majority of groundwater in Pennsylvania flows through tiny cracks in solid rock. We can see the water flowing out of this rock outcrop along these small fractures. We can also see water flowing out of the same kind of small fracture and into the well in this water well in Mercer County. Wells are drilled to intersect these fractures so that the water can flow into the well where it can then pump it out to be used in our homes. Rock that has more and larger fractures will have the best chance of resulting in a well that can supply enough water for your needs. And different rocks have different water bearing properties. The Pennsylvania Geological Survey can help you with finding the best rock type to drill your well into, but usually a residential lot is small enough that only one type is available. Who can drill a water well in Pennsylvania? First, you need to find a licensed water well driller. The Pennsylvania Geological Survey can provide you with a list of currently licensed drillers. Not all licensed drillers are equally capable. To get a license, all that's required of a driller is to complete an application and pay $80. There are no qualifications to assure that the driller can properly drill a well. So be careful in selecting a water well driller. Remember, this is your water supply that you depend on for clean, safe water. This is a drill bit that the driller uses to drill the hole in the ground. The bit grinds through solid rock. Casing is a pipe, often steel, that is put into the hole to line the upper part where the soil and rock tends to crumble and could otherwise fall into the well. Once the driller reaches solid rock, he'll install the casing and then drill an open hole for the rest of the depth. Once the well is drilled to its total depth, a submersible pump will be installed to pump water through tubing into your house. The pump is usually placed about 10 feet above the bottom of the well so that any rock that slakes off from the side of the well doesn't eventually bury the pump and so that the pump is pumping clean water instead of loose sediment from the bottom. The tubing that carries the water out of the well and into your house exits the well several feet underground where a buried pipe takes it into the house. The reason that this is done is so that the pipe doesn't freeze in the winter. Wells used to be drilled in pits so that they remain below frost level. Today the pit is not necessary because of this device called a pitless adapter. It connects the pipe from the pump to the pipe entering the house. It makes a tight seal to keep the water from leaking out or any contaminants from leaking in. It is then buried underground. The cap covering the well may be a small part of the overall household water well system, but it's an extremely important one. A properly installed well cap separates potential pollutants from your drinking water. This is a standard well cap that's on most wells in Pennsylvania. Uh, it is just bolted onto the well head with a, a couple of screws, and uh, the problem with them is they don't have any type of seal uh, against the well casing, and you can probably see in here uh, there's a lot of nests and bugs and that can get into your water well and therefore we recommend using a sanitary well cap. This is a sanitary well cap that will seal the well. It has two parts with a rubber gasket in between and whenever you bolt it down it will seal against the side of the well to prevent anything from getting in. Uh, the drill, whenever it's drilling the well, breaks the rock up at the bottom into very small pieces. This is an air rotary rig that blows the, the rock pieces out of the well. And you can see that they're much smaller, much different looking than what it looks like in an outcrop you see along a road cut or something. When a water well is being drilled using an air rotary rig such as this one, the bit spins in the hole breaking up the rock at the bottom. Air is forced into the hole and it blows the pulverized rock back to the surface. This rig is a cable tool rig. It drills the well by banging the bit into the rock to break it up. The driller will stop drilling periodically to collect the pulverized rock from the bottom of the hole and remove it from the well. 
Then he goes back to more drilling. Each type of drilling has its own advantages and disadvantages. The casing is installed after the driller reaches solid rock. Because there is space between the outside of the casing and the wall of the well bore, surface water, which may be contaminated, can flow down through the space and get into your well water. Therefore, you should always be sure that your driller will grout the casing to eliminate the pathway for contamination. It costs a little more, but remember, this is your water supply. You'll be drinking this stuff. After the well is deep enough to supply the amount of water that you need, the driller will install the pump, connect the pitless adapter, and hook it up to your house. Wiring is included to power your pump. When the well is done, because of using a pitless adapter, you can let the top of the well stick up above the ground surface. Burying the well or building over it is never a good idea. You'll need access to it again someday, if for no other reason than the fact that pumps don't last forever. Also, the driller will disinfect your well after drilling is complete. Even so, after a short period of time, I'd advise you to get your well water tested for bacteria. When the driller is finished with your well, he's required to give you a copy of the well record that he submits to DCNR. Keep it on file for the future when you need it to do some work on your well. It's like your well's birth certificate. So you've bought a house, or are considering buying a house that's already supplied with a private well. What should you do to be sure that there won't be a problem with your water supply? The first thing you should do is to get a copy of the driller's well record. The previous owner or builder should have one. If you, don't, if you know who drilled it, you can go to the driller to get a copy. Sometimes the driller's name is on the well cap. If the driller submitted a copy to our office, as he's required to do by law, we can try to find it for you. Do you have a sanitary well cap on the well? I'd get one if you don't. I'd also have the water sampled, probably annually, but definitely before buying a house. In some cases, the banker or real estate agent may require that the water be sampled. Places to go for guidance on water wells include the Pennsylvania Groundwater Association, your local driller, the Master Well Owner Network, Penn State Extension Office, wellowner.org, and the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Here at the Pennsylvania Geological Survey, we can help you with water well information. We can help you find your water well record if you have an existing well. If you're looking to drill a well, we can provide you with a list of water well drillers. We can provide you with a lot of information about groundwater in the state in general. And we can provide advice to you on a particular water well that you're having drilled in an area.